Hey guys, it's Claire. Welcome back. Today I wanted to talk to you about a book that I recently finished reading that I'm having some really mixed feelings about, and that book is I'll Be Right There by Kyung Suk Shin, translated beautifully by Sora Kim Russell. So this novel tells the story of university students living through the 1980s in South Korea, which was a period of tumultuous political upheaval, student protests, and unexplained deaths and disappearances. And the book follows a young woman named Jung Yoon who has just returned to her university in Seoul after the death of her mother, and she now spends most of her free time wandering alone throughout the city for hours on end. And it's only when she befriends some fellow students that she starts to shed her self-imposed isolation, although all of her and her friends carry their own buried traumas and painful pasts. And like many highly educated and intellectual 20-somethings, Yoon and her friends are are searching for meaning and purpose in their lives, but they're wrestling with those existential questions against a backdrop of violent demonstrations and political unrest. In a city where the air burns with tear gas and where friends and loved ones disappear under suspicious circumstances. And so while this book is an exploration of youth and early adulthood, for Yoon and her friends the stakes feel much higher and the connections and bonds that are formed during that period of life feel all the more intense and important. And I want to say from the outset that I really liked this book. On some levels I might have even loved it, but it is also deeply flawed. And so what I'm wondering now is how to evaluate a book that on a structural level has a lot of issues, but still has the power to kind of carry you away emotionally. Because that's really what my reading experience with this book was like. On a rational level my head was saying no, but my emotional heart was all in. And to explain what I mean, I first want to highlight some of my biggest issues with the book and then move on to what I loved about it nonetheless. Although this book is exploring a particularly fraught and tragic period in South Korean history, there is so much tragedy in this book that it sometimes gets to be too much. From a storytelling perspective, the body count, so to speak, gets to be so high that it threatens to dilute the impact of each emotional blow. And I don't want to get into specific examples because of spoilers, but it really is just like one thing after another, to the point that it kind of takes you out of the novel and forces you to wonder whether it's realistic that one group of friends could be touched by so much devastation. So in that sense, it kind of felt like Kyung Suk Shin was lacking in narrative restraint. And at a certain point, the relentlessness of that kind of approach can start to feel manipulative. And another way in which the story feels manipulative, or at least very heavy-handed, is through Kyung Suk Shin's use of symbolism and motifs. Most notably, there's a character in the novel called Professor Yoon, who is a poet and instructor at the university, who Yoon and her friends find particularly inspiring. But I personally hated everything about this character and the way that he was used in the book, because he wasn't a real character. He was more a symbolic, almost Christ-like figure, and his presence in the book was basically just to dispense wisdom and sort of profound life lessons. And it really kind of epitomizes the way in which Kyung Suk Shin in this book tries to wrap the story up in these neat bows and kind of trite messages that I really disliked because I felt like they oversimplified and reduced a lot of the complexity that's in this book. Yet another way that Kyung Suk Shin manipulates the readers is through the withholding of important information, and this is something she does several times throughout the book, in that you will know that something bad has happened to a particular character, but you won't learn what that thing is until much later on in the story. And I think that the withholding of information from the reader can sometimes be a really effective technique, but when it's used to the extent that it is in this novel, you become aware of the ways in which the author is trying to elicit a particular reaction from you. And lastly, I took issue with the ways in which the characters in this novel often felt underwritten. These are characters who are largely defined through the traumas that they've experienced and then on a secondary level through their relationships with each other. But they often don't feel like fully formed people, and because of that lack of development, I often felt like characters' actions or motivations or responses to certain situations 
reasons didn't really make that much sense. Most notably, there are characters who separate and drift apart and lose touch, sometimes with devastating consequences, but it isn't always clear why those separations and estrangements had to happen. So I guess my biggest issue with this book is that I felt like I was being emotionally manipulated by Kyung Suk Shin, and I also felt like she sacrificed some realism and character development in order to pile on the tragedy and the melodrama and the overwrought to elicit a strong emotional reaction from me as a reader. But here's the thing. I was successfully emotionally manipulated because I found a lot of this book incredibly sad and moving and at times gutting and heartbreaking. Which is a good segue into all of the things that I really loved about this book, in spite of all my griping about the flaws and storytelling imperfections. More than anything, I would say that this book is about the bloom of youth and what happens when a generation's youth is poisoned or cut short by circumstances beyond their control. And this book captures the incredible beauty and also the ache of youth, which is a time when even under the most normal circumstances, emotions and connections are at their most exhilarating and intense. But for the characters in this book whose friends are disappearing and dying, those feelings are amplified to their highest frequency, and that narrow window of youth feels particularly precious and fleeting. The characters in this book are constantly saying to each other things like, let's remember this day forever, and they promise each other someday, over and over again. And the friendships and the romance in this book can often be quite breathtaking, and the characters make these earnest and deeply felt declarations to each other. And if anything, this book really captures what it's like to be young enough where the repeated promise of someday still feels sweet and full of possibility. But this book isn't just about youth. It's about looking back at youth from the distance of many years. And this story is told from the perspective of of an older Yoon looking back on her younger years. And because of that, this book is suffused with a heavy feeling of poignance and nostalgia. And I mentioned that I felt like this book was lacking in the feeling of realism, but maybe that's partly a product of the perspective. Because we're told about Yoon's youth primarily through her memories of it. And because of that, this book kind of has the gauzy quality of a memory filtered through a thick, retrospective lens of guilt and grief and regret. Even within the flashbacks to Yoon's youth, it feels like the characters are constantly looking backward or glancing over their shoulders to catch a glimpse of another character, maybe for the last time. And it feels like we're looking at them through a picture frame. And it kind of gave certain parts of the book this sweeping cinematic feel. And I kind of loved that use of memory and imagery. But then again, I am also someone who is very sentimental and easily carried away by feelings of nostalgia. So to summarize, if Don Draper's definition of nostalgia is to be believed, then I'll Be Right There is a book that is steeped in the pain from an old wound. The radiance of youth and the ache of tragedy and lost time bleed through every page of this novel. And yes, the pathos and nostalgia can sometimes get to be a bit too much, but there are moments and images and things that characters promise promise one another that really pierce the heart and capture the staggering grief of this generation of young people whom history has failed. And I found all of that incredibly moving despite all of the book's other imperfections. So those are my thoughts on I'll Be Right There by Kyung Suk Shin. Was I emotionally manipulated? Probably. Am I okay with that? I think so. I do recommend this book, although I will say that it's probably important to know thyself, and if nostalgia and the regrets of youth are not things that do it for you, then I would say maybe stay away from this one. But if you've read this book, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have certain books that you love despite their glaring flaws and imperfections, let me know about those in the comments below too. Thanks so much for watching and attending this therapy session with me, and I'll see you soon. Bye!